Hello, YouTube, BookTube, the world, mankind, humanity, the Adamic race. This is Johnny. I time to make a video. It seems like it's been a, a long time, but I have been able, in spite of all the activity around our house the last week and a half, with our daughter Bethany and her family visiting us from Denver and then we had our son Josiah and his wife Hannah and their little daughter Marika visiting us from the Seattle area but everybody left early this morning so Papa and Nani are trying to get back to their routine whatever that is you keep uh, flowing on the death flow you keep on living for Jesus in the dead zone, as I'd say. So, yeah, I'm pretty tired. I got up at 5 o'clock this morning. Carol and I got up at 5 because Andy and Beth wanted to be on the road by 6.30. And I think Josiah and Hannah left. Well, they're going to go to Canada first. Uh, Hannah has family. Her grandmother lives up in London, Ontario, someplace way up there. So they're going to visit her grandmother, then they're going to fly back to Denver. No, yeah, no, Seattle area. Hannah and Josiah and Mariah live on Mercer Island in the Seattle, Washington area. So yeah, I'm pretty tired, kind of space, kind of like I've been like in a prize fight and I got, uh, you know, clobbered and I'm still kind of s stunned but I'm sure in a couple of days I'll get back to my little normal state of consciousness and uh, yeah so I hope you're all doing well it is July the 5th 2019 it is a Friday night here in West Michigan uh, we have the it's been really hot the last couple of weeks so we've had our air conditioner going non-stop and uh, I can hear people out there uh, I can hear explosions I personally do not celebrate any national holy days uh, I'm not a nationalist I do love America but not in a nationalistic way I am thankful that I have been born in America but I'm not saying that this is God's special nation on the earth. I mean, I think God loves every nation. Well, loves the world in a, the common grace, not in special grace, but in common grace. Because, uh, you know, America has only been here a very short period of time in world history. Think how long China has existed, or Russia, or England, or France, or Italy what great history they have had. Of course, they've not always been nations. That's true. Anyway, I'm not here to talk about geopolitics or talk about uh, being an American. I'm here to talk about books. So what have I been reading? Well, I'm still just been reading what I said I was reading and which I forgot to bring to my... Uh, I didn't bring it to the table. Oh, I did. <laughs> Here it is. I have been reading this. Abel and Cain by Gregor von Rezor. This is translated out of the German by David Dolomayer Jacob Neocrosserl. I can't pronounce his name. And Marshall Harborough. This is a, a recent... Uh, re-edit it of a translation. Anyway, I've been reading this. It's just, um, it's probably come, become one of my favorite all-time novels. Uh, there are some novels that stand out in my mind that are my favorite, and this will become one of my favorite. Now, I've only read 189 pages, and it's 860 pages, so I might get kind of let down but thus far, I have been really enjoying this novel. And uh, 
highly recommend it. Look it up on Goodreads. Look up book reviews. Uh, so I've been reading this primarily. Like I said, it's been really hectic around here, trying to find time to read. And of course, I have to update my paper diary. On July the 5th, I ended on page 587 for the year 2019 of my paper diary, 587 pages. So tomorrow is July the 6th, will be a Saturday, and I plan to go to Staples office supply store tomorrow. I might visit some thrift stores. I'm not sure. Carol, we need... I have to go to Staples because we need printer ink for our printer. Carol wants to print off uh, a flyer for the neighborhood. Carol wants to have an ice cream neighborhood social in the middle of the street in our block. So she wants to print off uh, the information to our neighbors that we're going to have an ice cream street neighborly social. In the past we've had uh, potlucks out in the middle of the street in the middle of summer but uh, last year it didn't happen. Uh, people are just probably busy living their lives. So what else is going on in my book world? Well I volunteered at the library used bookstore last Monday and Friday, and I always bring something home from the book nook. Last Monday, I volunteered, and uh, when I was there last Monday, Carol and everybody came in except Caleb and Emily, and everybody bought books. But I brought home these two books last Monday from the book nook, library used bookstore. The Unwinding and Inner History of the New America by George Packer. He's very famous for his book, uh, The Assassin's Gate, uh, America in uh, Iraq. George Packer is a staff writer for The New Yorker and the author of The Assassin's Gate, America in Iraq which received several prizes and was named one of the 10 best books of 2005 by the New York Times Book Review. He is also the author of two novels, The Half Man and Central Square, two other works of nonfiction, Blood of the Liberals, which won the 2001 Robert F. Kennedy Book Award in The Village of Waiting. His play, Betrayal, ran off, ran off Broadway for five months in 2008. His most recent book is Interesting Times, Writings from Turbulent Decade. He lives in Brooklyn. Now this came out in... Because I know he has a recent book out, which I can't remember right now. But it's... This came out in 2013. So I got this because my oldest son, Caleb, he had read a recent article by George Packer in The Atlantic about uh, how America has declined in foreign policy and it's because we have such a, a dumbass president. But so I got this from my from the book nook and I also picked up this crime novel written by uh, a Mexican writer, Mar Martin so Solores, Don't Send Flowers. I don't know. I just went to, oh look at, this is a book marker that was when my granddaughters left here. <laughs> so, a little kitten. I don't know, I, I was thinking today, since I've been on BookTube, I've gotten really into crime fiction. <laughs> Never really, well, years and years ago, uh, when I lived in California and I worked midnight uh, graveyard shift at a 7-Eleven store, I told you guys that there was one of those racks that spin around and they'd have these little pulp novels or fiction or, and I used to read those and some of them are crime. I'd, I'd read them there during the night. I never bought them, I just would read them off the rack. But I got this one, Don't Send Flowers. This is translated as Spanish 
by uh, Heather Cleary. So I know I, I've got into crime fiction. So today is a Friday and I volunteered at the Book Nook from 10 to 1 and I picked up another crime novel. I, I, I read uh, a, an interview in the New York Times book review a while back on um, this crime writer James Lee Burke and I started collecting his novels so if I see him at the book nook I have one down on the lower level that I picked up a month ago or two months ago and this is one I found today at the book nook it's called this is by James Lee Burke Sunset Limited uh, a day a day Rorbic ro novel uh, so yeah these novels take place in Louisiana and it says here in the town people the townspeople of New Liberal Liberia, Louisiana didn't crucify Megan Flynn's father they just didn't catch whoever pinned him to the barnyard barn wall with 16 penny nails Decades later, Megan, now a world-famous photojournalist, has come back to the bayou looking for cop Dave Rayabick. It was Dave who found the body of the labor leader, Jack Flynn. The sight changed the boy, shaped him as a man. And after 40 years, Rayabick is still haunted by the bizarre, unsolved slaying. Now Megan's return has stirred up the ghost of the long-buried past igniting a storm of violence that will rip apart lives of blacks and whites in this bayou country. And for a good cop with bad memories, hard desires, chilling nightmares, the time has come to uncover the truth. Yeah, when I picked up a couple of months ago a novel I saw at the book nook written by him, I was really impressed by the, 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 the language and the, the imagery, the characters, the description of New Iberia, Louisiana. So, look forward to reading this. And then I picked up the day at the book nook. This is a novel. I, I, I when I first, when I was in high school, I was really into realism, natural realism, and I was really into Theodore Dreiser. American Tragedy is one of my favorite novels when I was really young. And I found, I never heard of this novel by Theodore Dreiser, Jenny Gidhart. Uh, Dreiser's powerful novel of a woman compromised by birth and fate, now restored to its complete and unexpurgated form. I don't know. I'd like to get back into reading Theodore, Theodore Dreiser someday. Then I picked up this biography on Victoria, Queen Victoria, by A. N. Wilson. I collect the writings of A. 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 N. Wilson. He wrote The Victorians. He wrote a book I just showed, The Death of God, a nonfiction book, and he's written a biography on Toy Story, and he's written uh, I don't know. He's written. A, biographies on the Apostle Paul, a biography on Jesus. He's just kind of an interesting writer, so I was kind of, I saw this as for a dollar and I picked it up. I also checked a book out of the library. I checked this out of the library system. It's called Attention Dispatches from the Land of Distraction by Joshua Cohen. The reason why I got this is that Joshua Cohen was one, is one of the uh, translators of Abel and Cain and I noticed uh, it was listed in the uh, Joseph Cohen is the author of nine books including Attention, Dispatches from Land of Distraction, the novel Moving Kings. He is a contributing editor to Harper's Magazine. So, so the, our library here in Holland had this and I, I, it looked interesting. It's essays, and I was going to read the one here on hung like an ag abigus, hard as the Olympian. Uh, it's about uh, well the literary scene going uh, literary. Uh, what was going on in literary circles or a literary magazine in the fifties in Paris? 
which was called the Olympia Reader. So I wanted to read that, so I got that to read tonight. As far as what else I've been reading, well, I did read sometime, I can't remember when, sometime this week, I read some of this. I, this is a, a memoir I was reading a month ago or two months ago, Light Years by Chris Rush. <coughs> so I got, I'm still reading this, and I got it back out to get a little change of direction in my reading. This is Light Years. It's a coming of age kind of a memoir by Chris Rush. And uh, I did get a book in the mail that I had pre-ordered. Trinity Without Hierarchy, Reclaiming the Nicene Orthodoxy in Evangelical Theology. Editors Michael F. Bird and Scott Har. Horror. I got this because I wanted to read. Uh, I saw. I'm really into Trinitarian theology, and this looked really interesting. It just came out, and I wanted to read. There's a in here. There's a. There's an essay in here by uh, T. Robert Baylard, and the essay I want to read uh, probably to. This weekend, he humbled himself. Trinity, covenant, and gracious condescension of the Son in John Owen. John Owen is one of the great 17th century Puritan divines. And I'm kind of curious about this essay. So I'm going to read that this weekend. And I've been reading still in the mornings a little bit when I'm kind of not dazed and confused. Biblical Spirituality, edited by Christopher W. Morgan. I've been reading just the first essay, A, a, a Tractatory of Spirituality by Christopher W. Morgan and Justin L. McLean. So I've been read, I'm going to start reading this in the mornings once I get my brain together. And I'm going to show those other books on my desk that I hope to get, to get back into in the month of July and probably into August. So yeah, I got a book coming in the mail, a novel, a translation out of a South American work, and uh, I ordered another translation of a, of a, a South American work or a writer from Mexico that I uh, ordered tonight too. I'll probably get in the mail probably next week. So yeah, that's what's going on in my book world, my writing in my diary, our children have all left, our grandchildren have left, Carol and I are trying to get back to some kind of state of normalcy. Carol had to work, unfortunately. She didn't have to work, but she wanted to work and not use those hours. So she's working Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, so I'll probably make a video tomorrow. I have a huge stack of used books from the stores I got this week when I was out doing errands I had to stop at thrift stores you know that's how I am and tomorrow I'll probably go to thrift stores like I said I have to go to Staples and get ink for our printer and there are two nearby thrift stores Salvation Army and Goodwill near the office supply store so I hope you had a good week Hope you have a good weekend. Thank you for the new subscribers. Thank you for the comments. I hope you're all doing well, that you didn't get your fingers blown off by firecrackers. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, and so I'll sign off. And until next time, bye.